The big takeaway for me was the adoption of data and how healthcare leaders are now more and more inclined to use the data in a meaningful way, for example, using AI for clinical decisions. So it's important for us to conduct this research uh, so that we also aware of what the industry trends are, uh, what our customers are, are looking at insights, but also R&D is a big part of our business. So to make sure that the innovation is meeting the needs of healthcare as it's evolving. I think the, the rate at which uh, South African healthcare leaders are embracing technology is quite significant uh, to acknowledge that and also invest around the infrastructure related to that because it's going to help with the challenges that we have. Uh, example, staff shortages and uh, skills development, etc. It's amazing how aligned we are <laughs> with Philips. And I think for me, it's good. It boils down well for the future. Because, like I said, we really want to have a critical mass of our doctors trained in this. And we think that if we've got more doctors trained in, in AI and technology, we, we will put them ahead of the curve because technology is the future of healthcare. I mean, you just need to go back uh, to during the COVID times. I mean, that time, you really did not have a difference between public and private. Healthy nations actually thrive. So every rent that you spend in healthcare is not necessarily a, an expenditure per se, but it's an investment um, on, on the nation itself. So I do think that uh, collaboration is critical. There's a saying that says you want to go fast, go alone but if you really really want to go far you need uh, to collaborate with other people if we partner with companies like Philips there is a, a potential to actually increase access to healthcare access to specialist services because then you can get people sitting at central hospitals providing mentorship to people at clinics there's just no other way about it the first takeaway for me is the, the great level of interest in digitalization and artificial intelligence. I think the conversations have moved on from being ones where AI is feared, ones to saying, well, how can we embrace it and make it work? And uh, by making it work, making healthcare and healthcare outcomes more effective, more efficient. How do we help patients? How do we address some of the manifest challenges and attendant challenges in healthcare? So I think there was a greater embracing of both digital solutions, digital tools, and also AI. And of course, we know that with a country with the type of disproportionate disease burden that we have in our own country, you, you cannot uh, row your own boat here. The realities are we've got to cut our cloth according to what we've got, what we can afford, but also we cannot be oblivious to what the financial and economic outlook of the country is. I mean, everyone can be aspirational in life and say, well, you know, I want to drive a Bentley. A, a, an affordable Fox, Volkswagen that everyone builds will still get you from A to B, but it will get you from A to B effectively. Right now we're squabbling about the Bentley and no one knows how the Bentley is going to be paid. So we've got to start, stop talking past each other, start talking to each other and be realistic around where our capacities and, and resources lie and how we best leverage those because at the end of the day we only exist for one reason and that's to serve a patient and to, to give a, a patient better quality of life and reduce mortality and morbidity.